Okay, uh, yeah, I know I have an iPhone, and I'm tweeting about Marxist dogma on my phone on sure. Twitter, um, but I don't really like capitalism. Mm -hmm. um, can I just opt out? Can you opt out of capitalism? Okay, so short answer and long answer. Yeah. Short answer, no. Um, long answer, mm, there are things that you can do maybe. Um, you could live off the grid. You can go, um, you know, live in a hippie commune or whatever. But you're still going to be under the thumb of capitalism because of the nature of capitalism. And we know this because of Wounded Knee and Ruby Ridge and anywhere and, else where people were trying to avoid that stuff. Yes, yes. And the... <laughs> So the, the sort of the, the joke, the, the reference that everyone brings up about, um, you know, when Al Capone was taken down, you know, he was taken down because of his taxes, right? Mm. Um, he wasn't taken down because of all the people he murdered or whatever. But the thing that the government will enforce is capitalism. So if you are, if you are skirting capitalism, they will crack the fuck down on you. Mm. Um, so if you think about it in that way and you sort of frame it in that way, yes, he was a bad person. He did, did bad things. But ultimately... <laughs> That's not the justice we got. That is not the justice we got. We we absolutely got very capitalist justice. Um, okay, so I like the short answer better. Um, no, you, you, you can't. Um, it's, it's a freeing answer. Um, it's also a painful answer. The problem with capitalism is it has to be viral. It has to consume everything. Um, if, if with capitalism... Um, it's trying to grow. It has to try to grow by its definition. Um, if it hits a wall and there's no more to grow into, it has to make something. And so, so it has this, this viral nature to it. Um, and capitalism's biggest crime really is guaranteeing that everyone under capitalism has to be complicit in capitalism. Um, it's the popular phrase. There's no ethical consumption under capitalism. And what that means, it doesn't it, it, that isn't a freeing statement. That doesn't mean that you should not think about where your money goes and what you are doing within a capitalist system um, because some actions and some choices are more damaging the, than others. Um, however, most choices that you make with your money will go to further capitalism by its nature. That's one of the big reasons why we can't really just vote capitalism out. That's, that's never going to happen. Um, that's not the nature of the system. It won't allow for that. Capitalism as, as it is, like I said, it grows and it has to grow. Ultimately, its goal is to make for sure that there's nobody outside of its umbrella. And it's done a very good job of that over the last hundred years. Um, most of the world is, is under it um, with global trading and things like that. And you'll find that whenever a group of people decide that they are going to reject capitalism, Mm -hmm. that capitalism steps in hard. Um, like the pipeline. Like the pipelines, like, um, like Cuba, like Venezuela. Um, anytime a group of people decides to reject capitalism, capitalism will violently try to impose itself upon them. And whenever you hear like horror stories about a lot of these places, sure, yes, there are some bad people in communist societies and, and socialist societies, but a lot of the horror stories that you hear really come down to capitalism and the problems with it. Um, for example, Venezuela I was talking about. Um, in Venezuela, uh, you will oftentimes hear stories about how, oh, a roll of toilet paper is $25. Um, you have to wait in line for six hours to get it. The reason why that is is not because it's a socialist community, but because capitalism decided that it was a rogue community and it was going to do everything in its power to squelch that community and to make it harder and harder to live. Um, so a lot of times this will be done with like sanctions. Um, capitalists will will input um, or put down embargoes, that sort of thing. Um, and really, in any in any global economy in any global organization you have to interact with the rest of the world in, in order to get things going. And it's good to interact with the rest of the world. It is, it is. And we'll talk about globalism in another video, but um, globalism isn't inherently bad. Um, the problem is, is that capitalism mixed with globalism 
becomes a higher degree of exploitation. It's more opportunity for exploitation. But this is the same thing when you take democracy. There's nothing wrong with democracy. Yeah, democracy is great. But once you combine it with capitalism, it inherently undermines itself. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, because it's, it's filtering uh, more power into the hands of fewer. Okay, so you can't opt out of capitalism. No. Or we can't, as it stands. Yeah, you, you really can't. Okay, so what do we do? Uh, that's... So... When you, when you hear people talk about capitalism, socialism, communism, and you hear leftists say that we need a revolution, this isn't some glib, off-the-cuff statement. When we say the workers have to seize the means of production, this isn't a slogan. Uh, this isn't just something that we're saying. It's absolutely true. You can't reform capitalism into being not capitalism. That's a huge issue. Um, and to, to repeat that, you cannot reform capitalism into being not capitalism. That's, I think, something that a lot of people don't understand. Um, and I think that it's, it's very important. You can regulate capitalism to make it a little bit less dangerous, but it's still fundamentally capitalist, and it will find a way to make itself corrupt again. Um, so you, you need to reject it. Uh, and... By you, I don't mean an individual, because an individual can't. Um, the, the, the power in leftist thinking, in communism, in socialism, um, in Marxism, is collective action. So ultimately, what we need is collective action and a rejection of that system. Yeah, do you think that can be handled peacefully? Does it require violence? Um, I think that violence will happen because of the capitalists. Mm. The capitalists have a lot of power and they are not willing to give it up. Um, so if there is a revolution, there will, there will be violence. Um, you can have a non-violent revolution while violence is still committed upon the revolution. Mm -hmm. But the counterpoint to that is, well, you know, you, you say, does the revolution have to be violent? We're already in violence. There is already violence being committed upon the people. Um, not you just don't, you don't just mean in the general it's violent for me to be exploited kind of heady way. You mean literal violence. literal violence, yeah. literal violence. Um, right now, I mean the the black community in America is talking about it constantly, mm -hmm. and a lot of people in the world are just starting to see that hey, this is a thing. Um, the police can murder people in the streets, and they get away with it. That's on camera. On camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and yeah, on camera. People will say, well, but what about body cameras? Will that solve the problem? No, it won't solve the problem because we've seen police with body cameras. They either turn them off or they just don't care. Mm -hmm. um, so violence is being committed upon the people. I, I don't think that violence as a threat should be an aversion point for a revolution uh, because it's already happening. And it's going to continue happening. Okay, well, I think that segues into the next one you want to do. So sure. let's stop there. Cut.